Let's also now take you through some of the key questions that arise in the aftermath of Zawahiri's killing. Let's break down all those details for you. Remember, all of this happened in the heart of Kabul. So the first question that we are raising is, how was Zawahiri in the heart of Kabul without either the support or the knowledge of the Taliban? The second big question is, did Taliban give a safe haven to Zawahiri from 2021. The third big question is, is Taliban once again Al-Qaeda's political shield? The other question that we're also raising at this point is, with no clear deputy, what really happens to the Al-Qaeda now? There is no successor, so what happens to the organization? Also, the question that we're raising is, will this boost Joe Biden's sagging popularity in the United States? Will this be his moment to ensure that he can have some sort of stability as far as his own presidency is concerned? But these really is the big questions that we are going to discuss with our colleagues in just a bit. But first, let's take a look at this report. The U.S. has been trying to do this for so many years. Uh, Kylie, uh, this comes after the U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan, what, nearly a year or so ago, changing the counterterrorism landscape. That presents new challenges for the U.S. right now, doesn't it? Incredibly new challenges, Wolf. And I think uh, those at the State Department, those within the Biden administration who said after that withdrawal that the Biden administration would still work on counterterrorism operations in Afghanistan are, are probably feeling pretty good right now. Uh, because, as you said, according to that Taliban spokesperson, this was a drone strike that was carried out yesterday in Kabul, which is hugely significant. Uh, and there have been concerns about how the Biden administration, how the U.S. could continue any sort of uh, legitimate counterterrorism operations in the country without having a U.S. military footprint on the ground there. You know, Kylie, uh, you do a lot of reporting on all of the uh, national security related issues. How high of a target was Ayman al Zawahiri for the U.S. at this point? Well, listen, he was an incredibly high target, but not only a high target, but a longstanding target of the U.S. government, Wolf. When uh, you guys were talking earlier, he is someone who was integrally involved in the planning of the twin embassy bombings that took place in 1998 against the U.S. embassies in Tanzania and Kenya. That was over 20 years ago. And at that time, of course, he was on the radar of the U.S. government. And thereafter, he actually escaped a U.S. missile strike that the United States tried to take him and Osama bin Laden out in Afghanistan. And since then, he has just risen in terms of how important he is to the U.S. government. Well, reactions there coming in, as we pointed out, also raising a lot of questions. One of the first questions that is, of course, is raising is that uh, how did... Zawahiri continued to be in the heart of Kabul. How did this actually take place without the support or knowledge of the Taliban? The other question again for the Taliban is, was the Taliban actually giving him a safe shield or safe haven since 2021 and its takeover? Now, former CIA Director General David explains what intelligence and military coordination was likely needed to complete the targeted drone strike against the Al-Qaeda chief. Let's take a look. How have the Taliban... I mean, first of all, I guess the Taliban knew he, uh, Zawahiri was living there uh, and I guess approved that. What are their capabilities about the ISIS affiliate, against the ISIS affiliate? Well, they're battling the ISIS affiliate. Yeah. Uh, they're also battling some of the, the uh, resistance forces, as they're termed. Let me highlight something you just mentioned, uh, Anderson, and that is, of course, that, again, uh, the leader of al-Qaeda is located in Kabul, indicating clearly uh, that, in a way, Taliban didn't learn the lesson from allowing, uh, again, bin Laden to have a sanctuary on their soil when the 9-11 attacks were planned in Afghanistan. Uh, after which, of course, they refused to expel him from their territory. And, that, of course, that's why we had to go in. So it does reflect the continuing close relationship that clearly still exists uh, between al-Qaeda's senior leadership, uh, that, that small group of Zawahiri and the others that is still left, 
uh, and obviously the Taliban senior leadership. The fact that he was in Kabul, I don't think, is something that could have uh, been been possible without the Taliban knowing that he was there. Is it clear to you why Zawahiri has been able to avoid being captured or killed so much longer than Osama bin Laden was? Well, first of all, Osama bin Laden stayed essentially off the net for a very long time as well. Uh, and Zawahiri has essentially done what bin Laden did, uh, which means that therefore he can't very capably lead uh, the affiliates of al-Qaeda around the world. Uh, essentially, they have been operating autonomously, independently. They may be part of the brand of al-Qaeda, but they certainly weren't under any kind of operational control. Again, noting that this is a very, very symbolic success uh, to bring one of the last of the original al-Qaeda leaders who did so much damage around the world, again, the East Africa bombings, yeah. uh, a number of the other bombings in North Africa, other exhortations of bombings elsewhere, not to mention, of course, being a core part of al-Qaeda when the 9-11 attacks were planned. And, and he was increasingly, I mean, he's one of the group who was sort of increasingly radicalized in Egyptian prisons, wasn't he? That's true. In fact, he actually led uh, the Isli Egyptian Islamic Jihad prior to the CIJ uh, in the 1990s. And it was in the late 1990s that he actually merged uh, with Osama bin Laden. Again, they having met him earlier uh, on the battlefields in Afghanistan yeah. fighting the Soviets during with the Mujahideen. And my colleague uh, Anand Narasimhan also now joining us on the broadcast from our newsroom. So, Anand, a lot of questions still remain post this killing of Al Zawahiri. The first question is could this have been possible without the support and the knowledge of the Taliban? Well, there are multiple ways to look at it. Uh, ironically, that uh, Pakistan, which denied the existence of Osama bin Laden on their soil, uh, found uh, the Americans found Osama bin Laden not far away from the military uh, uh, outfit or cantonment outpost uh, in Abbottabad. And he seemed to be living in the throes and perhaps in the company of the Pakistan military. Here, uh, where Ayman al Zawahiri has been neutralized is Sherpur. Sherpur is in the heart of Kabul. And it is impossible that nobody knew. It's, it's, uh, it's not so far away. It's a 10-minute drive from the defense area and the hardcore uh, key security zones in Kabul. And how is it that the Taliban did not know where Ayman al-Zawari is staying? It's another question. But the, the fact of the matter is that uh, uh, did the Taliban look the other way? That's another point. Is this a plausible deniability clause that they are also invoking? That, that's another way of looking at it, because there will always be two sides to the same coin. And uh, Sirajuddin Haqqani, we spoke to him 15 hours before yeah. this strike. And at that time, he said Al-Qaeda is a defunct, not a threat anymore, and as good as dead. So it's either a smokescreen that he was trying to create when he was speaking with CNN News 18, or he was, some, he was talking about something which was inevitable. And look at the coincidence that 15 hours later, Al-Qaeda, uh, head of the Al-Qaeda is, is dead, is neutralized. So how do we look at this is another way uh, of, of, of trying to uh, work this out. For the Americans, it's a big success that after their exit, they have got Ayman al-Zawahiri dead. So Osama bin Laden is dead, Ayman al-Zawahiri is dead. But does that mean terrorism is dead? Does that mean al-Qaeda will not find a new fount? Does that mean the Islamic State or the Daesh will not act? We can see that they are active, their machinations are active, their operatives are still trying to find, grow, uh, uh, you know, there are still people who subscribe to their ideology and who are influenced by them. And the Al-Qaeda may just have moved base out of uh, Afghanistan and must now may now be operating very strongly from Bangladesh. We do uh, So there are many intel inputs which say that the Al-Qaeda in the Indian subcontinent is finding, uh, has its found and its large key operations out of Bangladesh. So these are all concerns which will remain. Does terror get neutralized? Is terror over? That's a bigger question. But for America, they will claim True. a big success back with their... Uh, uh, and Joe Biden will go back to his constituency, a nation that is battling recession. He will have something jingoistic to offer and saying, listen, we've neutralized Ayman al-Zawahiri. Anand, I'll request you to stay on with us. Now, on a 